Welcome back, everybody. Today, I have for you a true one block resolution display. Behind me here is 64 by 64 individually addressable pixels. And the great thing about it is that in the main part of the display, it's only 16 blocks wide. That means you can fit it into a single chunk. And just on the opposite side, you have one block extra that sticks out. That's it. This is the entire display. Over here, you have a few ports. So the red is for rows, blue is for columns. Over here, you have direct addressing to the columns. The white is for a few settings. And over here, you have an image ROM. So you can store two images here, either on the left or right of the walls. The image data gets sent all the way down. Yeah, and gets brought back up through a bubble column. This is something I'm incredibly proud of. Most displays that are one block resolution requires a bunch of staircasing, but no, mine does not. Mine makes use of walls, or right, this wall here, which allows me to control which row and which column I want to write to. So I'm just gonna go to a smaller display because this one's a little bit too large and my computer struggles to handle it. All right, here I have a few displays. So they get increasingly complex and uh, increasing amount of features. So this is the final version of it, but I'll just go through how everything works. So first of all, you can select what columns you want to write to. And then after that, the row operation takes 1.2 seconds. So every time the lamps light up and the jingle ends, you can continue writing. So I can just do this. So right now I've drawn uh, basically three eyes and I can actually invert the entire screen. So now instead of being an indentation, it's actually on the outside and I can just do that as many times as I want and I can actually write it when it's inverted and everything will still be fine. I can deselect all the columns. I can select all the columns. I can also invert a selection of columns. So right now three of them are off. I can invert it so now only three of them are on. I can also address each column in each row individually through binary. So right now it's going to be zero. There's the very first one. And I just add one more and it continues all the way down the line to the 16th column, which is actually a dress of 15. And then I can, let's say I write to the second, uh, well, the th it will be value of two, but it's actually the third row. So I do that. And it should write above the dots. As you can see, it's one, two, three, and one, one. So one, two, three, one, one. So this is, the final display but let's take a look at how everything works step by step so first of all everything starts with the walls so for a very long time i knew that you could address uh you could send a signal through the sides of walls like this but if you wanted multiple i expected that you needed a air gap in between the walls so i can do this i can do this but I can't have a wall here. I, the only way for you to get uh, signals out through each block is if you take the signal out from the bottom. I can do this. I can also address this one and I can also address this one. But if I were to, let's say, put an observer here, it wouldn't work. I can no longer address that. I can still address on the side, but I can't get signals out from the side over here. Until I realized, I, by accident, completely by accident, and I guess this was just a gap in my knowledge, because I've asked a few people and quite a lot of people just didn't occur to them. So right now, I have blocks on all sides of this part here, and I can address this. Same thing over here, I can address this, but I can't address this because there are no blocks on all the sides. So this doesn't work. What you need to do is actually fill it in, so there are blocks on all sides again, and now it works. And basically what happens is that if you look here, you have a plus. And if you do open this trap door, an inner column forms. And this shape change 
gets transmitted all the way back down. So now, I you can get signals out from the side, and it being one white toggleable. So now let's take a look at the very first display. So this one is completely manual. So first of all, you can invert the column. But this is not very useful because you're just inverting the column. So what you can do is you can actually remove blocks out from the side. So let's do that. So if I do this, I invert the entire row. So basically, I'm powering this piston here. So this piston fires and then this one gets QC. That's fine. Anyway, I break the wall chain. And anyway, when I break the wall chain, all these observers update. So this entire row also inverts. And then I invert the column. But because the walls are broken over here, it doesn't transmit all the way. So all these observers here fire. And then this piston here gets QC, so it pushes the block out here. Uh, but that's not the pixel you're drawing. You're actually drawing this pixel anyway. Uh, and then what you're going to do is you're just going to return the inversion. So now because this one was out here, so everything down here was like this, and then this one gets actually pulled back in, and so that gets your drawing from this pixel, you actually invert this pixel upwards all the way to the top. So now this obviously isn't an individual pixel, but now that I've actually managed to invert a single column from a point, I can do the very same thing, but I just shift it up by one. So I do this, invert, the row, invert the column, and then invert the row again. I have now drawn an individual pixel. So this is great. So, so great. And really, it's extremely simple. So the column uh, addressing is just directly over here, and then the row addressing is also very direct. There's the pink line here, and then the white section here is just to uh, fix everything. If anything breaks, that's how you fix it. So let's say that I unload the display at a very, very bad time. Let's say the server crashes or something like that. I just do that and that and that. Let's say something like this. And everything out here gets broken. So it gets caught in the wrong state. Whatever happens, it's still fine. So now in all our devices, having toggle states is very bad because that means if it breaks, someone has to go in and manually change everything. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to QC all these pistons here. And what's going to happen is that it's going to pull all the blocks to this side here. And this side will be a mess the first way through. Anyway, once all the blocks on the inner layer gets fixed, uh, or at least have a predictable state, I can QC everything again. And by QCing everything in a predictable manner, you can also transfer the QC up to this layer, which then fixes the, out the layer, and then you just push everything into its proper state. So let's just take a look. So the inner layer gets QC'd twice, the outer layer has a jumbled mess the first time, and the second QC that runs through fixes it, and then it just pushes everything back out. And that is the first display. Anyway, over here, instead of having a direct addressing to the columns, I just use levers to control and it's fed through a clock. Over here, which is the yellow circuit here. Anyway, so basically in this version, I tried to do the first half of the operation all automatically. So I've selected those two uh, columns and if I do this, it will write everything by itself. Now the thing about it is that I can write individual pixels by just going up or I can draw straight lines vertically uh, but only vertically like this. So that's basically it for this version of it. So if uh, whatever you need, if you just need a certain portion, let's say you need for a tree farm or something like that where you only need a certain portion to be inverted. This basically does everything for you uh, using this magenta circuit. So what happens is that when you send a signal through uh, the ping layer here, 
it's going to send one in here and it's going to send two signals out here so just one in then one out column gets activated and then one more out again in order to draw a vertical line and let's move on to the next uh, display over here the only difference between this and that is that I've added in another section here so over there the pink circuit gets activated twice over here it's activated four times twice on one layer let's say here and then another one on the layer above it which is just basically this part here to so activate this sends a signal here twice and then up here twice that's it oh I, I think I just hit something <laughs> Uh, yep, that was a mistake. Anyway, let's just show you how it works. So I select columns and then I select rows. And it draws individual pixels by itself. Okay, now the downside with this display, this version of the display, is that if you have an extremely long one, you're going to invert the entire row. So if you look at it, everything from the left to the right in a four block high set of pistons will activate and obviously that's very bad because if you're only drawing one pixel you're going to have a whole bunch of pistons firing so over here i have a few more things so first of all i have instead of using levers i actually just use a mm. toggle state to control mm. whether a column is activated or not mm. this allows me to get a signal from the outside and also i've added in a uh, comparator and gates so over here if you look at this if i have a single two game click pulse that gets sent through into your comparator this piston will not fire but okay if i just have a repeater it should so comparators are a little bit weird so what you can do is you can either send a four game tick signal sorry this so now this top part is delayed by two game ticks. So overall I have a four game tick signal and now the piston should fire. Sometimes you don't need the, red, the repeater over here, but if you want it to work in all the time in all orientations and uh, ways of powering, uh, you do need a repeater. Also there are uh, weird ways of double powering. So sometimes you can also do this and activate both uh, observers at the same time. But I've also had uh, problems with this, so this works, but sometimes it fails on me. I don't know why. Either you can use that, or you can send a 3 game tick signal, and then you don't need to do any weird powering, or you don't need any repeaters. So over here, this works, but if you move that observer, it doesn't fire. So scaffolding on trapdoors actually provide a 1 game tick offset, so this is why this works. Anyway, back up here. So basically, the only difference between this one and that is that now uh, I have a clock signal over here which goes through this block and then gets sent through the walls here sorry it activates the trapdoor which gets sent down through the walls which powers the comparator over here and at the same time the rows over here uh, powers the comparator so it receives a three game tick signal and gets transferred all the way down to the rows so if over here I select uh, a column over here you'll see that only a section of four by four pistons here activate and then after that i roll vertically down like that so you can draw any number of pistons sorry any number of pixels and only a section of it will fire and over here i've added in the options again so i can deselect all the column select everything invert everything or invert the entire screen and that's basically it so uh you have this part which provides the jingle over here you need a whole bunch of delay in order for the water bubble cock to sync up with the bubble column you have the magenta circuit that provides the level offset and then after that this part here which provides the two pulses necessary over here, this white part here activates the walls again. This is actually for the reset because the way uh, comparator locks work, uh, end gates work, is that um, you send a pulse through, but that means that you can't send a signal through uh, each layer just having one set of walls. So that's why I have two sets of walls 
uh, offset in timing a little bit and that allows it to work very well and yeah that's basically it that is all there is to the display and then the final version obviously you just add the decoders on top and on the side so now i can just input the input either the white red and blue or the red white and light blue and now all that's left is actually just to program the display so let's just jump back to that all right over here we are back to the rom so the rom works by sending a signal from a specific point going down with as many rows as you need so if i've already pre-encoded the decoder over here so all you got to do is let's say i want to start drawing from this level in the display so i put an observer here and then what's going to happen next is that every time i want it to go to the next level i just put a block here so the signal gets sent through this observer here through the block powers the rail all the way down and then once i stop putting blocks it stops propagating so you don't no longer activate the rows over here so all you gotta do is put your trapdoors here uh, here for settings i recommend either just putting it at the top or bottom because i haven't uh, tested all the synchronization timings for the white circuit and then you just put your trapdoors over here uh, turn on and turn off that's how it works and the program is very simple so basically what I want to do is I want to write out all the white concrete over here so what you're gonna do is when you have white concrete every time you ha uh, go back to air or supposed to be uh, indented or whatever uh, you put a piece of glass over here so I want white then it's air so I put a glass then white again and then air put a glass so every time a white starts and every time there's a glass you put a trap door over here so that means that oh, uh, I start I activate the column so now every time it goes through a row it's like okay right 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 all the way down over here and after that now this one deactivates the column so it's just a toggle state so it deactivates the column and tries to write but then it becomes an ad uh, it turns off the column so it doesn't write anymore so that's basically how you program it and that's all there is this is my display so over here i've written melon tech i'll just show it off again so now it's going to get rid of it so i run the program a second time to clear it perfectly either that i can just reset the screen and as you can see it's toggling the columns and then every time it just goes down the row let's see that again and again uh it runs at 1.2 seconds per row uh, unfortunately i don't fully understand why uh, it only can run at 1.2 seconds if you write uh, up to down if you run down to up you actually need to add a little bit extra delay per uh, per row but that's it anyway guys thanks for watching uh, if you've liked this video please uh, leave a like comment and subscribe hit the bell, bell icon to be notified and last but not least stay zen